Right guys, I'm going to talk to you about an article that I saw on the Mail Online um, and I will leave the link below, I'm going to actually read it to you. Now for a long time, whilst I've been doing my research into geoengineering and other stuff I've been doing, I keep coming across nanoparticles, smart dust as well, has also featured a lot in my research um, and I find it a lot in military applications, there's a lot of patents for this kind of stuff as well. So that's why I'm reading this, because there's a lot of interest to me in this article and I'm sure you guys will find this interesting as well and some of it is quite frightening. So what will humans look like in a thousand years? Videos suggest we could develop red eyes, have darker skin and be better looking. Um, it says we'll be taller and thinner due to global warming and genetic mutations could turn our eyes red and give us superhuman abilities. Okay. Humans will be very different creatures in a thousand years from now. So first of all I want to say in terms of the the evolu evolution of man, how we've changed as humans, you know, physically, whatever. We haven't. The human body has not changed at all. Um, I don't even think the brain has changed. Nothing has changed. You know why? Because we're already perfect. And there is no... We don't need anything else done to us. We're just made in such an amazing way. We are perfection as humans, you know, mentally and physically. Our bodies are amazing. We can heal ourselves. There's so much we can do, right? So the only way they're going to try and change us is if they're going to use technology. Climate change, artificial intelligence and genetic mutations are all set to transform our bodies in drastic ways according to a recent video. We could for instance develop red eyes as our DNA mutates. The video created by Canada based ASAP Science describes a hypothetical scenario in which our bodies are part human and part machine. Now, for those of you who've been following me for a while as well, you also know that I know about transhumanism and stuff they want to do there. For all of you that have seen the Sophia Smallstrom video, this is going to ring some bells with you, what I'm going to read. So, he, a hypothetical scenario in which our bodies are part human, part machine. In future, nanobots or tiny robots will suddenly... Be inter will be suddenly integrated into our bodies, enhancing our abilities. I'll read that again. In the future, nanobots or tiny robots will suddenly be integrated into our bodies, enhancing our abilities. Now, guys, what does that mean? How are nanobots or tiny robots going to suddenly be integrated into our bodies, enhancing our abilities? How do you think they're going to do this? I wonder. I wonder how they're going to use all the. Um, I wonder how they're going to use the the nanobots and the the smart dust and everything else. I wonder how they're going to disperse that amongst us. No longer will we be limited by our own physiology, but truly become a mixture of biology and machine on the inside. Meanwhile, designer babies will cause future generations to grow into intelligent and physically attractive people. But while that will make us better, smarter, stronger and better looking, such a genetic similarity or lack of human diversity leaves room for a single new disease of the future to wipe out the entire human race. So they're talking about how they're going to make us amazing and we're all going to be these crazy, unique, amazing creatures with all these extra superhuman talent. But then they're also saying about um, a disease in the future that's going to wipe out the entire human race. Okay. As global warming, the hoax takes hold, humans will also be skinnier and taller, it predicts. As this body shape is better able to dissipate heat, our faces may also change dramatically, according to Dr. Alan Kwan, who holds a PhD in computational genomics from Washington University in St. Louis. Dr. Kwan has created a stunning series of images which display one possible evolution for the human race over the next 100,000 years. Dr. Kwan believes that key to our future evolution will be man wrestling control of the human form from natural evolution and adapting human biology to suit our needs. As genetic engineering becomes the norm, the fate of the human face will be increasingly determined by human tastes, writes Dr. Kwan. While foreheads will continue to expand as our brains continue to grow larger, have our brains grown any larger? At all. 
As man achieves total mastery over genetics, the human face will become heavily biased towards features that humans find fundamentally appealing. Strong, regal lines, straight nose, intense eyes, and placement of facial, facial features that adhere to the golden ratio and left-right perfect symmetry. Um, okay, so everybody's face in the future is going to be appealing, strong, we're going to have regal lines, straight nose, and intense eyes and placement of facial features. Are they just describing a white person's face? They've already told us we're going to have darker skin, so are we going to all be darker skinned but with white features? Hmm. Dr. Kwan believes eyes will grow unnervingly large as the human race colonises the solar system and people start living in the dimmer environments of colonies further away from the sun. Really? We can't even go back to the moon, guys. Anyhow, eyes will also develop in other ways that would seem startling from our viewpoint today with new features including eye shine enhance, low light vision, and even a sideways blink from reconstituted pilica simi similunaries to help protect our eyes from cosmic rays. But the change to our appearance may happen faster than these time frames. In fact, by 2050, a completely new type of human will evolve as a result of radical new technology behaviour and natural selection. This is according to Cadill Last, a researcher at the Global Brain Institute who claims mankind is undergoing a major evolutionary transition. In less than four decades, Mr Last claims we will live longer, have children in old age and rely on artificial intelligence to do mundane tasks. This shift is so significant, he claims, it is comparable to the change from monkeys to apes and apes to human. They've got something big coming, guys. They've got something big set up here. Your 80 or 100 is going to be so radically different from your grandparents, Mr. Lars says, who believes we will spend much of our time living in virtual reality. Some evolutionary scientists believe this age could be as high as 120 by the year 2050. Mr. Last claims humans will also demonstrate delayed sexual matur maturation, according to a report by Christina Sturbens in Business Insider. This refers to something known as life history theory, which attempts to explain how natural selection shape key events in a creature's life, such as reproduction. It suggests that as brain sizes increase, Organisms need much more energy and time to reach their full potential and so reproduce less. Instead of living fast and dying young, Mr. Last believes humans will live slow and die old. Global society at the moment is a complete mess, he told the Mail Online. But in crisis there is opportunity and in apocalypse there can be metamorphosis. The biological clock isn't going to be around forever, he added, and said that people could pause it for some time using future technology. His views are detailed in a paper titled Human Evolution, Life History Theory and the End of Biological Reproduction, published Current Aging Science. By 2040, cabs will be driven by Google robots, shops will become showrooms for online outlets, and call centres will be staffed by intelligent droids. That's a scenario depicted in recent research which suggests robots could be taking over our lives and jobs in less than 30 years. I think it's sooner than that. The competition for work caused by a rise in robots population will see us heading to surgeons for additional processing power for our brains. Can I just say that additional processing power for our brains is already available and it's called critical thinking? It's, try, it's called trying to get the answer before you Google it, okay? Um, we may also be requesting bionic implants for our hands that will make us able to perform tasks as fast as any machine. Futurologists commissioned by global job search website expatjobs.com say workers will have less job security and work more unsociable hours. Those who take these risks and innovate with their own bodies will be the biggest earners in 2040, they claim. 
So if you take all this technology on, you take the chip, you take all the other crap, the nanobots, the nanoparticles and the smart dust, you are going to be the biggest earner in 2040. Forget that you just got rid of, rid of all your humanity, okay, and things that make us humans, and while we're different from machines... However, the study added that workers may be left with poor eyesight, smaller sexual organs and constantly furrowed brows as they struggle to keep up to life in the 21st century. So uh, in the future, uh, we're going to be working hard. Um, if we mess about with our bodies and take all this technology on board, we're going to be one of the biggest earners in 2014. Men are going to have smaller penises and we're going to constantly have a furrowed brow as we struggle to keep up to life in the 21st century. The study predicts that by 2050, a typical male worker aged 35 will have red eyes, a smaller penis, a larger brain, advanced language skills and bio implants to improve their imp performance. So guys, that's what we've got to look forward to. In, in a thousand years, they're telling us, but I'm saying it's going to be a lot sooner than a thousand years because whenever they start giving you technology and information like this and they're telling you it's new, they're lying because they've probably been doing it since the, the 40s already and they're doing stuff. But it's very important to understand what they're talking in here about the nanobots and the, the nano robots, the smart dust. I mentioned smart dust, it's not in the piece, but I do know that smart dust does contain nanoparticles. Now, could this be what the, the chemtrails are about? Could this be what the spraying is about? So the bit that scares me here in this piece is the fact that he's saying in the future, nanobots or tiny robots will be suddenly integrated into our own bodies enhancing our abilities he also goes on to say that this is going to be the biggest change since men turned apes turned into humans which i don't believe happened at all so guys just be aware that things are happening and, and something is going on in terms of them wanting to change us as humans and they like to make it sound that it's going to be all very nice and it's all going to be very fun you know we're all going to be the bionic man but the thing is, it won't be like that. Why would they want us all to be like that? They want to keep us all down. They're trying to depopulate. They try to make us live in fear constantly and make us think that everything is scarce when it isn't. You know, it's part of this big mind control game. Just be aware that this is what the scientists are talking about. This is not coming from me. I'm going to leave the link. Go and do your research. And can I also suggest, guys, after you've watched my video and read this, um, read this article and gone and watched the videos can you also watch a video that is on Miles Johnson and it's very very important hang on a minute I have to find that right guys I want you to do me a favor once you've watched this video and once you've checked out all the links below I want you to put into the search bar Robert Duncan intelligent systems of control and it's on the Miles Johnston channel now you need to listen to this video you need to listen to this man you need to hear what he's saying he works for the military i think he still does because it was a very weird kind of um presentation he gave he was laughing while he was talking about how awful this could be but listen to his information because they've put it out there for a reason and i think it's very very important that you all watch this video and bear in mind what i've said here and also what you're going to hear robert duncan say as well so I'd really appreciate it if you watch that. And come and give me some feedback. Come and drop some comments here about what you thought about the piece as well. Okay, one love, one love guys. Take care. Peace.